Let's start with the crisis in freediving. Uh, there are three crises in freediving uh, that are more common uh, that I'm working with. A lot of my students are coming to me uh, with the fear of the water. Uh, so they have the crisis of freediving before even starting the freediving. Uh, for example, my wonderful uh, friend Anna, uh, she came to me uh, with never swimming and with a great fear uh, of being in the water where it's uh, higher than um, our diaphragm. And now she is a wonderful uh, little, uh, not very little, but already uh, good uh, mermaid freediver. Uh, she's been also in depth. She's made uh, 21 meters. Um, she started her um, speech when I asked why, what, what do you want to receive from, um, from the course? She said, uh, if I'll be able to swim more than two meters, it will be already a great achievement. And okay. Uh, so this is the first crisis, the crisis of the fear of the water. Uh, I think none of you do have it here and now in uh, that sense that I'm saying that you are not, you cannot swim. Uh, so we'll go to the second crisis. The second crisis is uh, the crisis of the principant uh, when you are just starting and when you arrive to the end of your comfort zone. And there the crisis do start because uh, you start to have fear of uh, what will go uh, on. You want to breathe, uh, you feel uncomfortable, you are out of that wonderful zone that you just relax and feel the water and you have enough air and you're like really happy. And uh, you, you have uh, two possibilities uh, to uh, overcome that crisis. The first one uh, is the common one, uh, is um, um, the uh, rejection. So you do reject the, the crisis. That often happens also in our lives, but we'll speak about it later. So I do reject uh, this uncomfortable situation and I come up. I go out of the water. And that is the end. Uh, it um, keep me in my comfort, but it does not give me any development because I'm not going further. Um, please raise your hands. Who are the instructors in our groups? One, two, three. Okay, let me see the page four, five, six. I see six instructors. Awesome. And I will ask our instructors, uh, I see you, Nicole, so, uh, please raise your hands. Who uh, do uh, often see this uh, reaction on the first, on the second crisis in freediving in your students who just come up after uh, going out of the crisis zone? Please raise your hand. Instructors, one, two, three. So everybody do see it. And we all need to deal with it to help our uh, students to go further. Yeah, I, I see you. Uh, and uh, now we will go on the first crisis and then uh, we'll go on how we can solve, how we can help our students. Uh, the first crisis is when you overcame this phase of um, second crisis of rejection, uh, you can overcome it in different ways. Uh, it can be, okay, I don't want uh, to go further, I feel uncomfortable, but, uh, or my instructor or myself are pushing me to go further because everybody is going further and what I'm doing here if I'm not going further. And I keep my fear, I keep my uncomfort, I take my power of will in my hands and I push myself to go further. And uh, this is not um, the, uh, we don't accept the crisis, but we are trying uh, to, to push it away. Uh, we will succeed in doing it for some more meters, some more seconds. And uh, the possible um, finish of this um, uh, pushing ourselves can bring uh, to the rejection of the activity. Uh, I try to, I force myself, I rub a little bit more, but I feel uncomfortable, so I don't want to free dive anymore. Uh, so it's uh, not a constructive way uh, to overcome this crisis. Uh, the second way, uh, the productive way to overcome is, uh, this crisis is to accept. 
yes, I do accept that I uh, am going out of my comfort zone. I can feel it, and it's like that. But I would not push myself to go further. I would not, uh, the word pushing uh, itself concludes the contraction of my muscles. So if I'm pushing myself, I have my muscles contracted. If I have my muscles contracted, my oxygen is going away into my contracted muscles. Uh, so I accept and I would not be tense. I would not uh, use my oxygen in a wrong way. Uh, I will explore, I will try, I will see what is further. And in this way, we can go further, being relaxed and uh, feeling way and uh, well, and arrive to a certain um, uh, results, let's say results. And then we will arrive to the third crisis. This is the uh, most difficult one. Uh, this is the crisis of a good athlete who arrived to his limit. Um, this, uh, we are in the group that the name is Moving Limits. So we all know that there are no limits. We can go all further and further as much as we want. We need just train and keep our mind free. Uh, so uh, when we arrive to this third crisis, to when we see that we cannot go further, that that's it, we passed our um, comfort zone and we arrive to the point that uh, just, I can, uh, like, I, I feel that that's it. It happens to me very often, especially when we're going uh, in the deep, uh, like in uh, Y40. Uh, one day I had uh, uh, a workshop in there and, uh, maybe 70% of uh, my students were arriving to 30 meters and it was uh, like they had the block in there. They couldn't go further 30 meters. Uh, it was not um, the real physical um, limit of the moment because we can have the limit of the moment of, of the day, of the period, but we can always go in a little bit further. But it was a mental um, block. And um, every time before the um, training, I'm asking what is your um, purpose of this training? What do you want to do? And this 70% said, oh, we want to overcome 30 meters. We cannot do it. It's, it's our block. Uh, we made one meditation, it was like 15 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, yeah, and everybody of this 70% uh, went over 30. And the, uh, the 30% who was less than 30 went uh, really uh, deeper uh, because they took away this mental limit from their head and just let them try what is further. And everybody felt uh, really well. Um, the, when we are training, uh, we have the visual visualization of ourselves and we imagine, we feel uh, what we can and uh, what we cannot. And in this feeling, what we cannot is our limit. So we are imposing our limit by ourselves. Very often it happens that we're imposing the limit uh, with our fears and sometimes uh, it happens that uh, we just do not know that uh, we can go further than we can uh, do more. Uh, like in 2004, uh, it was a world championship in um, Croatia, a CMAS world championship, uh, my first uh, world championship in free diving and the Italian team was the strongest team in the world and three men in Italian team were uh, doing 133 meters in jump blow. Who doesn't know jump blow? It's a square. You need uh, to go to, now it's 10 meters, um, before it was 15 meters of depth, and then make uh, the square of 15 meters around as much as you can, and then go up. So it was oh, 135 meters for three men. 
uh, you can see that they were well trained on that distance and they all could do that distance. But no one did 136, for example, because uh, in the mantle they didn't uh, permit themselves to go over because they thought that that was the, the limit. Um, I didn't have any expectations and any limits because I've never uh, did it before and uh, um, I just was uh, there uh, feeling what my body can do and I did uh, 152 meters uh, so it was 70 meters more than their record and it was not that much physical like mental I had my mind free I didn't have any uh, any blocks I just did what I could do so to arrive to do what we could do, we can use a, a really powerful tool uh, that uh, we are always learning from our kids when they are born because they are the, the greatest masters. So uh, to go over uh, our mental limit, we just need uh, to take the kids' curiosity. When we have the curiosity, our tension, our fear, and all our things, uh, our things are just disappearing in our curiosity. It's um, the biggest power of the humanity um, because all the um, scientific um, and medical and other, um, um, how can I say it in English? Uh, when it's opening something new, uh, was made uh, thanks to the curiosity. Uh, when we are living in our everyday routine and doing always the same things, uh, we became a sort of robots and uh, we stopped living our lives. As soon as we put curiosity inside of us, we will never do the same things in the same way. We will always see uh, the energy and the life in what we are doing. So. Uh, in any kind of crisis, uh, it is free diving crisis or it is a life crisis, uh, the first thing to do is to wake up our curiosity. Uh, that will give us energy and strength uh, to overcome any kind of stop. Because what is the crisis? The crisis is when we arrive. There are two, two kinds of crisis. The first is uh, our crisis when we are trying to grow up and at a certain point we arrive to the limit we grow up till here and we cannot go further to go further we can put on our curiosity get the strength uh thanks of it the energy and find the creative way to overcome this stop as soon as we found it and we arrived on the next step we continue our um way up uh, in our uh, journey. If uh, it is a crisis that is not provocated by us, uh, it is a crisis provocated by uh, the world, uh, our work, uh, or our discipline, our sport, whatever, uh, it is a much more difficult because first of all, we start to reject it. I don't want to know about it. I don't want to get in it. Because being in our zone of comfort, we are used. Uh, we are uh, protected. We feel protected. And uh, when we're pushed uh, by external circumstances to go out of it, we feel a very... Um, uh, we feel very... Uh, uh, little and with a little power and uh, we feel that the world is aggressive for, towards us so it's a very weak position and as soon as we will try to protect from it and to keep ourselves in the comfort zone uh, we would never grow up but uh, in, in any crisis uh, we have this psychological passage first it is the rejection then uh, the rejection arrives to the limit and we cannot reject it anymore like the situation the global situation now as soon as we cannot reject it anymore and uh, the level of fear 
uh, while we are rejecting grows and grows and grows. And uh, on the point where we cannot reject it anymore, the fear is already on the top level. And there, of the fear and of uh, uh, the rationality that we cannot reject it anymore, we pass on accepting it. We start accepting the crisis and understanding uh, that something is happening. And as soon as we made this process of understanding and accepting, we start to uh, um, adjust ourselves. Uh, to find the way for ourselves uh, and then to follow this way. Uh, for example, now we have a global uh, crisis of like everything and uh, we are on the point uh, when uh, we can really start doing what we uh, want, what we dream and what we need. Uh, in, um, in the nature, um, the only constant uh, is changing. So the only constant thing is uh, that the world is changing, that everything is changing. The seasons are changing, our body is changing. Uh, so actually in the nature there is no constancy. And we like human beings, we are always looking for constancy in the world. We try to create a constancy with our job. Probably we don't like it uh, a lot, but it gives us a certain amount of uh, money that can uh, bring us to a certain constancy uh, and that uh, makes us feel comfortable. But as soon as we enter it in this scheme of um, comfort, uh, we stop uh, to be ourselves, we stop to be that kids uh, that uh, someone wanted to become a cosmonaut, another wanted uh, to go in the sea and live on the boat and uh, to travel the world. We just stop to be ourselves. We sell our dreams into this uh, sort of stability. Uh, now, in this moment, most of us are out uh, this stability and are uh, finding the way uh, to find it back. Uh, what uh, I suggest is not finding the stability, but finding ourselves and our path, our way in the world. Uh, and in that way, we will find that the stability will arrive by itself and we will be happy and healthy on what we will do. Now, I would like to go on questions. And uh, after answering the questions, we will go on the second uh, thing. Silvia Pozzi, she raised her hand. So, Silvia, please. So, hi, Marina. Thank you very much for this very interesting and uh, difficult topic. Because uh, if I understand it well, what you are saying is that to overcome the limit, we need to accept. Okay. And to get into um, a mood of acceptance means that, first of all, we need to recognize the crisis, that a crisis is going on, and that there must be a way to overcome this crisis. So, um, I, it, it seems that the most difficult point is to, to accept what is going on. And that seems to be the, the big conundrum. So how, how would you suggest anybody to go through this acceptance or to truly accept? Because I can say, I accept that this is my limit and I need to find a way and I need to, um, uh, uh, to find this curiosity and try to think what is beyond that limit, what is beyond what my fear. But it, I mean, it's not really easy to do. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, how we can do it uh, when we are at the limit? When we are at, at the limit, uh, we cannot think because we are already at the point of reacting and uh, usually the reaction is go, going up. So we need to think about it 
before. Um, I make workshops on psychological preparation where we work uh, on psychological preparation before and then using it while uh, the, the diet. For example, uh, before the diet, uh, we're thinking that uh, we will do today, um, we, we are curious uh, to see how much my body can do today in meters, in seconds, in depth, uh, and uh, also to be curious of all the passages that will happen to my body. And it will be um, the focus will be on this curiosity and on these uh, physical uh, sensations, but without focusing on the uh, minus part of sensations. For example, uh, when I'm going uh, after my um, comfort zone, I start to feel uh, contractions. So I'm not gonna enter in the contractions and uh, emotionally and suffer about it, because the contraction can be pretty uh, like a suffer. I'm not taking it like a suffer, I'm taking it like a, an experiment, a uh, medical experiment. I'm curious about uh, what can I do with the contractions. Uh, in my static, uh, my contractions will start one minute and a half, two minutes, and I will hold it till seven minutes. And uh, the contractions is my favorite time because the first oh, one minute and a half, two minutes, I'm there uh, trying to apply my psychological preparation to have something to do or uh, to empty my mind or to meditate because I have nothing to do. As soon as contractions start, I start to play with them. Like I feel the contraction and I relax it. I feel the contraction and I relax it. And it's a competition, a game, a play uh, with them. Uh, who is better to play this game? Me, who will relax them in a wonderful way, or they, them, uh, that will uh, attract my emotionally, uh, my emotional emotions, and I will go out. So uh, we have the game with the contractions. Uh, then, if we make the dynamic, uh, we, we feel that our blood starts to go on the um, small circle, and our arms and our legs. Uh, start to feel uh, that they are heavy. I have my legs that are burning really, really much. And after uh, one and fifty, something like that, uh, they become like a piece of wood, very heavy piece of wood uh, that I try to move. I stop um, making the right kick and doing not it only uh, with uh, my knees because I can physically I cannot uh, do further. And then uh, they just stop moving. But my mind is clear. So I can, I can go further. And uh, when it's in competition, I say to the judges, uh, guys, when I start um, going with my arms, that's okay. Uh, I am okay. It doesn't mean that I'm in a panic and I'm out of control. And I continue just going with my arms, with my left side not working. Uh, but, and I'm curious. Uh, to feel all these passages. It's not happening every day. So it's a really interesting uh, physical and um, mental experience. And going over, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going as much as my body can. And without uh, pulling myself uh, with the uh, uh, strength of uh, my mind or with the will, because if I go with a willpower, uh, I will black out. Because uh, I have a very strong will, and I would not feel the moment of going up. When you don't use the will, but use the curiosity, you go further and further till the moment that uh, your uh, inner voice uh, will say now. And that now is uh, your real now of today. It will go further with time and training, uh, but this now you should listen very clearly uh, and go up immediately. Oh, it's uh, take the um, dive as an experiment and be not in yourself uh, emotioning and suffering, but being out of yourself and uh, looking at your exper experiment uh, with joy and curiosity. Thank you. And, uh, because I was thinking, uh, while, you were, while you were talking, uh, I was thinking that sometimes it's our body and it's our mind that actually recognize exactly the point of the limit. So there's a specific limit 
reach and you could be disguised by anybody or anything like starting from a different point or you don't count and do anything but it's independently that you are going deep into the sea or you're in the swimming pool you just stop at the very same point after the same very same meters but actually the hint that you that you are giving is extraordinary i mean just being out of yourself stop a moment and look at everything at what is happening from a different perspective and give you the time to change something and just do nothing just do nothing is fantastic thank you thank you silvia dimitri angelinas is asking a question okay so let's see oh, i I'm, I'm muted myself yes i'm thinking we all reach our limits and the stress so many times and uh, several times i also thought about while i'm not doing the dive while sitting or while doing static to think about the stress that i have when i'm in uh, a depth that i don't feel comfortable so i work mentally while i'm in the surface uh so it means that uh, i want to go to 40 meters i'm comfortable until 30 and i'm thinking about it while i'm doing static while i'm doing that thing but personally to me it didn't really help i have probably one issue that i'm not that visual person so it's even harder for me to concentrate on the depth while i'm not there so i don't know if there is any technique or any way or any suggestion how to leave this hard situation while not being there i don't know with meditation several guidance or another way i don't know maybe diving till 10 meters with my lungs empty or something else that because uh, my limit it is uh, this uh, pressure that i feel over 30 32 35 i don't know how to to work in that because okay. i can be in epsilon 40 every single day otherwise it would be easier uh where do you feel the pressure in what uh, part of your body or mind Pro uh, what i realize that it is more uh mental uh pressure i feel of course here in my chest but it's um, mental since federico mana taught me with it took me a lot but since i got this mouth feel i never felt like i have a problem to equalize my ears anymore before i was a valsavian for decades now i never had a problem with equalizing but it's just a mental after 30 meters i just feel like i am like this i don't dive often in these depths and even if i I did in Epsilon 40, I did 345 in 15 meters, so I have the luck to stay longer. I can do it, but I don't feel comfortable, so I never reach the bottom of Epsilon 40, just for an example. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so if uh, your equalization is okay, yeah, that is fantastic. Uh, and it's just the mental uh, reception of um, the. Um, uh, oh my God uh helping with the world uh pressure yes uh, it's, it's uh, the mm, psychological reception of the pressure you feel like like pressed uh you can work first uh mentally with it and then you are in the water uh how you can work with it in the water you will arrive to your 30 meters that are comfortable and then uh you will um you will do free immersion because it's the easiest uh, way to work uh, and then start to go really slowly, accepting and uh, feeling everything that is happening. And this pressure that you feel over your body, uh, you can try to uh, resist. And it is the, uh, the easiest way to bring you to the lung squeeze. Or you can accept it and feel it like a hug. Like as someone uh, who you love or your friend is hugging you and you're giving yourself to this hug. And this pressure becomes a very pleasant one. You feel like a little baby um, that is caressed with his mom because the water is uh, very uh, female, has very female energy like the mom. And uh, going slowly, 
uh, lower and lower, you will be uh, getting, um, um, you will feel yourself well, uh, also a little bit deeper and deeper and deeper. And at a certain moment, uh, this pressure of depth will transform into something pleasant. And you will go there uh, looking for uh, more pressure uh, because you will, you will start to like it. That's something that I need to try, yeah. Yeah, because in my life, when I wanted to do something, I, do like, I go like a bull. So even now, if I say I want to go to the bottom of E40, I can do it, but mentally I'm not ready. And I don't want to put it as a, as a battle. That's why I wanted to leave it in a different way. That's, uh, yeah, probably I'll try to do the way you said, and then I'll update you. Let's do it together once the Y40 will be open. <laughs> <laughs> we planned it, no? Yeah, we planned it for March. <laughs> yeah, I have also, I have still my uh, workshop of March suspended, so it will be done uh, later on. Yeah. Okay, do we have any more questions or we go further? We have uh, another question of, uh, from uh, Keja, if you want to, if you, okay. During my static, I have always a heavy urge to breathe for me is mentally uh, unbearable. How can I overcome it? How to approach with curiosity? Static is yeah. the most difficult discipline in freediving for our head, because we have nothing to do physically. Uh, and in the same, same way, it's a wonderful way to be in contact with ourselves. Usually, I don't mean now in the current team, uh, but usually we are always rushing, uh, running away, uh, doing a hundred things, and we don't have physical time uh, to be in contact with ourselves, just to stop and feel ourselves. And static is the wonderful meditation uh, that gives us this possibility because we are holding our breath, we are uh, training ourselves, and in the same way, we can just stay there with ourselves and feel what we really want, uh, feel us alive, feel the body. Uh, the most important thing is not to think about uh, uh, the urge of breath. As soon as we start to feel, oh, I want to breathe, that's it. We'll have a little uh, dialogue. I want to breathe, no, stay a little bit more. No, I, I want to breathe, uh, well, please, oh, okay, I give up. Uh, so mm, the inner dialogue does not work at all. The only thing that works is to take our focus from our emotions and from our urge to breathe, because it's not the real one, uh, the true one. Uh, the ir real urge to breathe will be much, much further. And it's just uh, the mm, physical reaction of our body that is not... Uh, that used to hold our breath for a long time uh, without moving. Uh, and there are a lot of different techniques that we can use uh, while making the static. Uh, there is a wonderful somatic deconcentration or uh, visual deconcentration or sound deconcentration that we can apply. Uh, we can apply the curiosity uh, in that way. Uh, we can, if uh, you are good in uh, visualizing and in feeling your body, uh, you can enter in yourself uh, first in your heart and uh, feel how, how the, the beats of your heart. Uh, then you can also visualize uh, your heart. Uh, it's not that much a mental work. It's um, like a very meditative visualization, so it doesn't take a lot of oxygen to your, or from your brain. Um, uh, to, to your brains and uh, once you visualize your heart and saw how it works you can start to go through your uh, blood system uh, so doing that uh, you will be doing something else that suffering as the urge of breath and it, it will help you to um, to lead you or where you can arrive and not where you stop yourself uh, from from this urge of breath. There is another question. How 
can I know the difference between physical, physical crisis and mental crisis? Physical crisis is when your body cannot do any more. Mental crisis is when you stop yourself. But maybe this question is not, uh, uh, I, I can a little bit change it. Maybe it's- Marika, if you, if you want, uh, sorry, if I stop, if you want, I can explain it better. Yes, so, for example, when, I, when I'm doing a maximum trying in a swimming pool, for example, in dynamic uh, free dive, uh, after 80, 90 meters, how can I know that I am in the mental crisis and not in the physical crisis or vice versa? So, is there uh, a particular indicator that, in, in, that I'm in the mental one or physical one? Um maybe as i understand your question the question is how can i feel that it's the real moment that i need to go up or it's my uh, tricky mind that is saying me that i need to go up but i have more is that the question yeah yeah because sometimes i'm not so sure to uh, to know if uh, i am in a crisis uh, due to the physical uh, effort or crisis due to mental one so when I go out, for example, at 90 meter in the dynamic in the dynamic free dive, uh, I'm not sure that is a physical one or a mental one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what color of your lips are when you go out on 90 meters? What is the color they, of the lips? They are still pink. They are still pink. So uh, you can know that it's a mental uh, block that you uh, give yourself, and your body can do much more. Okay. Uh, I will answer uh, to your question uh, that uh, how can I understand that that is my limit of the day and I can no, cannot go further. Yeah. Uh, that is a very important point. Uh, if we are in contact with ourselves and while we are free diving, we are constantly feeling our body and our mind. Uh, our intuition will be free to give us the signal in the right moment. Everybody has his own signal. Uh, now we will ask uh, to people who arrived to their limit of the day what signal uh, they had. My signal is uh, um, usually my um, uh, vision is in front of me. I'm deconcentrated, uh, so I cannot see uh, clearly everything. It's like blurred, but it's in front of me. My attention is in front of me. As soon as I arrive to the point when I need to go up, uh, this um, uh, vision goes on the side, and I start to see that my attention is on the side. As soon as my attention is on the side, I go up. That is my uh, inner uh, bell that is saying, hey, go up. Let's ask Federico, where is his uh, belt? Uh, well, my, in, it depends from uh, which kind of, uh, of discipline. Yeah. Uh, the most simple one is in static, because I have different, uh, different moment uh, when uh, at the middle of the crisis, uh, I start to have contraction in, uh, in my body and it changes the buoyancy. Uh, in this moment, the only way to relax my body is to become able to pee in my wetsuit, because in this way, <laughs> I can really relax all, uh, all my muscle. After that, the contraction started to become uh, uh, very, very strong, uh, and they become hypnotic. So I have to move my attention outside uh, and that is the point uh, where I ask to my body to start to, to, start to talk to me, but uh, not telling me relax yourself because otherwise I'm going to go out and to kick his ass because I, I cannot relax uh, at this moment. And, but he have to tell me some story that I have to be able to, under, uh, I have to, be able to understand. As soon I... Um, I, I understand that I'm losing some point of this history or I lose some, uh, some word, uh, that means that I'm not clear enough and that's the moment when uh, I come up. Thank you very much. Very interesting experience. Yeah, go Mark. Uh, it was a, the same kind of question but more uh, 
between the mental issue and the technical issue. I mean, when you um, more on the deep dive, uh, my limit is always my equalization. Um, but I, um, how I can know that it is uh, really a mental issue or technical issue? I know that I'm, I know that with some exercise like. Uh, Sometimes, you know, the instructor, is, he told me, do variable dive, and I go much deeper. So I know there is a, uh, some, sometimes mental issue. But um, uh, is there an, a, a, another tool to understand if it is just technical or mental? Uh, as much as I saw you in Y40, uh, I've never seen you uh, coming up really tired. So you were always okay. Uh, yeah. That means that uh, you didn't arrive to, to the point, point that uh, you are tired and uh, uh, you need to go up. Uh, no, it was the mental, uh, more no, mental. It, stop it is not physical, I know. I mean, I don't uh, want to go up because uh, 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 urge to breathe or something like that, but it is always because you are, are not working, you know. So, so uh, now I, I I work with Giovanni about, uh, of course, about the technique and it's improving. But I also know that there is a mental uh, issue also sometimes, not uh, always, but sometimes. But always the the problem is that I cannot equalize the ear, you know. There is a link. They, right. Sometimes there is a link, I think, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. And I, I don't know when it is on that particular dive, it is just because technically I miss something, mm -hmm. or maybe there is a mental uh, issue, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, very often, uh, the problems uh, with equalization are coming with our uh, mental fears. If I have fear to go further, uh, my mind will, uh, my brain will give the command to my ears not to equalize. Uh, if I also have a pretty good technique in equalization, I can block it with my mind. So we need to let us go, let us try, let us see, uh, and to improve our equalization. Yeah. But uh, there is there is some kind of tool or technique uh, just to. Uh, I would say to cheat with the mind or to, I don't know. <laughs> we should not yeah. cheat with the mind. Uh, we can make visualization before the dive. Uh, that is very useful. And now, for example, while uh, we cannot go in the pool, we can do these visualizations of our deep dives or of our long dives. And it will be practicing. It will be the same practice uh, as in the pool with our mind. And when we'll just go and repeat it in the pool. So you can practice it every day, and then we'll meet in Y40, and uh, you will be there lying on the bottom of Y40 and saying hi, <laughs> and then going up really easy. Uh, okay, yeah, good idea. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I have a question, uh, oh, Marina. Right. Mm, we, y y you told us very often some emotion like fear, like panic, like anxiety, when we start, when we feel the, we started to feel the physical crisis. So uh, the physical crisis is uh, something that switch on a bad emotion, fear, uh, blah, blah. Uh, that uh, doesn't allow us to focus our attention on what to do in the following uh, step. So I would like that you explain us how the brain works, uh, where emotions uh, are, why we are not able to put the attention and to do some good things uh, at this point. I knew that you will ask me this question and I did prepare it well. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's go uh, on the physiology of the fear and uh, it will be a global um, uh, task you know, that we will be working with 
uh, not only with free diving, but what is going on in the world and how it is, um, uh, okay, how it is working with ourselves. Now, uh, in the global way, uh, we have always uh, the emotion of fear transmitted from all uh, the news, uh, TVs, and like everywhere. The fear of, uh, this is the question, the fear of what? Because like the fear of uh, the virus, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit ridiculous because many of us uh, have passed through uh, the virus and uh, understood that uh, me, for example, or my family, uh, get uh, infected and uh, in one two weeks uh, get out of it and uh, now I feel absolutely healed and uh, it's not uh, the thing to be uh, really to have fear of uh, because what happens uh, where, when we have fear and what is happening to our health while we have um, what is the uh, reaction of our body to the fear uh, the fear has two uh, faces. One is uh, the fear uh, friend, the friend fear, that helps us in our uh, evolution to evolve and not to die. The fear that says, you should not do that, you should not touch the fire, uh, you should not go where it's dangerous, and it helps us to stay safe. And it's not that strong, uh, that puts us in the panic and become our enemy fear. Uh, it is our helper. It helps us to, uh, to see the way we are to go. Uh, when we give more uh, food to, to the fear, uh, it becomes an enemy fear and it starts to um, destroy us. Uh, we can start to have panic, uh, we can uh, stop and not have the possibility to do anything. Now, what is happening physiologically uh, with us uh, when we feel fear? Uh, we have the signal uh, from how our hypothalamus, uh, the signal uh, to produce hormones. Uh, there are different, but the most known that you all know is adrenaline and cortisol. Uh, adrenaline, uh, what gives the adrenaline to our body? Uh, it gives, uh, from one part, it gives the power because uh, thanks to the adrenaline, uh, we have more sugar in our blood. Uh, so our insulin goes higher. And that gives us the uh, reaction, the possibility to the reaction to the fear. Uh, the basic reaction is to... Um, to run or to fight. So it's uh, for us to decide to run or to fight. We have the energy for it. The um, hormones give us the energy. But in our normal life, we are not fighting and not running. We are keeping it to ourselves. So this hormone of adrenaline with, that they have in our blood is not going anywhere. It st stays in there and it starts to destroy our, uh, our body. Uh, what else uh, it gives us, uh, not only the sugar in our blood, so more insulin, so if we're constantly under the fear, we can uh, receive the uh, diabetes. Uh, it gives us also the restriction, the vascular restriction, uh, because we need the power to our muscles, so the power is going to our, our muscles, and our um, heart starts to uh, have the higher rate and we have the vascular restriction that, uh, if we have it for a long time, can bring us to insults um, and uh, can uh, bring us to the problems with the digestion system, uh, to have problems with our stomach. Uh, what else uh, happens? Uh, it's um, uh, while we have fear, we want to go uh, to the toilet because this this is another reaction of opening uh, of our anus, and um, we have our blood pressure up. 
uh, and um, um, the fear is also uh, the emotion that is easily uh, shared with others. Uh, and it's shared uh, on energetic way, it's a vibration, and it's also shared on the smell way. We start to sweat, it's a, a, a cold uh, sweat, uh, and we can feel this um, uh, smell on unconscious way. That is happening also with the animals. If one animal has fear, it will transmit to other animals uh, the fear very fast. And this, um, how does dogs react on the fear? Uh, if the dog cannot uh, run away uh, or cannot uh, be aggressive, uh, to take away the adrenaline, the dog starts shaking. And shaking, it shakes away the fear. Uh, there is a psychological technique uh, for the human beings that was studied uh, looking at uh, the animal behavior that helps us uh, to take uh, out the fear. Uh, going through our um, life, uh, through the situation where we got fear, and if we didn't uh, take it away from our body, how can we do it? We can do it shouting or making high physical exercises so to uh, eliminate um, adrenaline from our body. Uh, we accumulated, 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 and uh, we put uh, the memory of when we had fear in our brains, and it stays there, uh, and start to make uh, the conclusion. Uh, it says, okay, this situation put me in the state of fear. And so the similar situation uh, will put me in the state of fear too, but I have already this um, experience. So I have this experience to this experience and I will have even more. And putting more experience like that, we start to have panics of these kind of situations. So we should never fix ourselves on the fear and we should always work uh, with it uh, to to take it off. Uh, now, well, the recent example uh, with the coronavirus, uh, it happened to me, uh, everything was more or less okay, I got uh, all this more information, uh, unpleasant information from the world, and at one day, uh, when my mom was uh, sick, I got a huge fear of this virus if uh, I would bring it one day at home and my mom can be sick and um, like oh, I'm starting to lose all my loved uh, jobs and I cannot go to Italy to make the workshop in Y40 and I have a lot of um, shooting in Italy and in London and here that and everything the world is uh, like um, falling over me. I start to have uh, this this fear what, that was growing and tensing my body, and I felt really bad. Uh, so I called my mom, and I said, "No, oh, mom, I start to have fear, and uh, I need to work on it." And in five minute conversation, uh, I accepted it. It was the rejection. I accepted it, uh, but the fear uh, lows down the immunity. So in that period of uh, the immunity that lowed down, I get sick. I never get sick, and. Uh, that was uh, the point. Uh, so, uh, we need to be very conscious of uh, what is going on with us in the terms of the fear. And as soon as we feel that we had it, uh, we need to make a simple exercise to get it away. I'd like to, uh, um, to do it now with you. And the first thing we need to remember uh, most important our fears of our life. Let's uh, close our eyes, breathe with our belly, and remember what fears uh, we had through our lives. It can be a childish fear when we fell in the water and start um, drawing, uh, or maybe when we fell down from somewhere uh, or we had the fear of um, public speaking or of uh, uh, not being accepted 
or any kind. Just uh, try to remember your fears and put it in, in your body. Try, start to feel uh, that your body uh, start to be cold. That is the reaction uh, thanks to the adrenaline. Uh, that you feel the tension in your muscles. Uh, that uh, you feel the tension in your head, that something is taking and pushing your head, and your breathing goes up higher and higher, and you start to breathe not in a good way. Okay, as soon as you are in the state of fear, let's stand up. Let's stand up, keeping this uh, sense of fear in your body, and let's start shaking shaking out the fear from our body first with our hands like we have the water on our fingers and we shake it off shake it away then we shake it from our elbows just do it really strong then shake it from your shoulders then shake it from your chest and your face we will shake it from our face with the sound, relaxing our lips like this. Shake it from your back. Your face, your back, your hands. Shake it from your um, hips. Shake well your hips and your legs and all your body. Shake it from your feet. It should be very powerful for you. You should warm up a lot <laughs> and feel like with your shake, uh, all these fears are going out. Let's make a good sound from our belly. <laughs> Big inhalation. <laughs> and shake yourself as much as you can. Like really strong. Very powerful shaking. Okay. We can sit down. Okay. Now relax. Close our eyes. We breathe with our belly. Good inhalation. Open ourselves and good exhalation. Close in ourselves. Relax and feel your body. How does it feel when it deliberates from the fear? Feel that you become the water and this water flashes away all the fear and all the tiredness from your body. Inhale. And that's it. Open your eyes and let's make some questions on this fear argument. This is a question that asks, does adrenaline suppress physical pain? Yes, of course, it does suppress physical pain and it can give us a really big power. And uh, that, uh, and it takes also the brain and uh, there are two ways. Uh, one way we become really very reactive and we can immediately take the right decision in a very fast way. It goes through our intuition and not through our mouth, my mind. Or the other way, we get paralyzed and we cannot think or do anything. Yes. Uh, what about a dry mouth? Uh, uh, when I'm scared, uh, I can have a dry mouth. Yeah. Uh, why? 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 Uh, because adrenaline um we have vascular constriction and we have also uh lymph constriction okay and it it, it will dry our mouth absolutely mm. so that's uh yes. what is happening 
Yes, for example, when, um, uh, uh, for example, an ex examination, I have to, yeah. to speak, uh, but I I have difficulty with this because uh, mm, my mouth gets gets dry. Yes, yes, yes. I will help you uh, with this. So uh, the fear of the public speaking has yeah. every single person, all the actors. Yeah. All the people, uh, all the speakers, they do have, uh, like everybody of us, do have the fear of public speaking. But we can use it in two ways. Uh, the fear is the emotion that is directed inside ourselves. Uh, if we will let it in, it will damage ourselves. But the fear has a very big uh, energy. If we take this energy and put it on the other direction, outside, we will be very productive and very good speaker because we will uh, give the energy to the people, the energy that produces our brain because we have fear uh, of this argument. For example, also today, I'm working with people since uh, I do remember me, I'm an actress uh, from when I was uh, 14, I was already uh, on TV, uh, but still today, uh, that's the, my first um, discussion about the fear and about the crisis. I've never um, took these arguments before in such a, uh, a way and uh, in English too. So I got fear before uh, meeting all of you and I took it, transformed it into energy and into curiosity. I'm curious where it will go. I'm curious uh, how important and how useful it will be to the other people. And so I uh, switch the fear to the curiosity. It gives me joy. It gives me excitement and energy to, to give what I have to, to others. Thank you. Silvia got nice. a question. Yes. Uh, thank you, Marina. The exercise you made, it, 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 it was beautiful. Um, and I try to recall the very, a very big fear that I had um, once upon a time ago. Um, that was a paralyzing fear, something that made me freeze down and I was unable to move. So I had people helping me to move from that position. So I was not able to reproduce all the feelings and sensations mentally and physical that I had that, at that time. And this time I was able to shake out everything and shake my body. But in that occasion, I would never and ever be able to do such a thing. And if I would find myself in that very same situation, I'm 100% sure I would not be able to move. So what, what tool of your mind can you use to shake and to start shaking in that way? Because when you are facing something that really paralyzes you, it's like taking your breath. It, you're not even breathing here. You're not breathing at all. Yeah. Silvio, thank you very much for a wonderful question. It's a really great question. And uh, ob obviously, if we get panic, this is uh, the, the name when we are paralyzed, it's panic. Uh, if we get panic, uh, the way, uh, or the first way is not to shake because we have not uh, any possibility to do it. Uh, but first of all, we need to learn ourselves and to understand when this uh, panic arrives. Because it's not arriving like this. It's arriving, uh, growing up, growing up, growing up. Like, <laughs> and when it arrives here, we cannot control it anymore. So uh, we need to get it uh, a little bit before uh, when we cannot uh, control it anymore. A little bit. And start breathing. Just breathing. Uh, we put our breath from our upper part of our lungs because the, the fear um, press all our lungs and put it uh, like higher and higher till we cannot breathe. And uh, going, uh, let's do it um, now together. And uh, we start breathing really high all together. And every breath or any inhalation will be a little bit uh, bigger. So put it lower and lower and lower till you lower it down till your uh, medium part of your lungs and then till your belly. As soon as you will arrive to the lower part of your lungs, uh, the panic will go away. You will feel already better. And as soon as you are breathing, so you're controlling yourself, 
then in that point you can start uh, shaking. Uh, the other thing is also shouting. If you feel that you are uh, all taken with the fear, shout. It can be just uh, that, uh, 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 and you deliberate your uh, voice. Uh, that will generate your energy, and that will let let, uh, let out the adrenaline and make you feel better. Marina, I have a question. So. Uh... I saw that it was a powerful tool to deliberate all the fear from the, our mind, but is there a, uh, a tool to prevent our mind to go to that fear? Sure, absolutely. Uh, what is the fear? Uh, the fear is uh, our reaction on something. Uh, and usually, if we don't know that something well, uh, we have our wonderful imagination that has an immense, immersive uh, power that will create us you know, huge dragons and uh, zombies <laughs> and all our stuff that will uh, make us uh, having fear. So what we can do? First of all, we can study our fear uh, to face it and look it in the eyes. Because uh, the fear, when we are uh, looking at it, when we are staring at it, is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. As soon as we turn our back to the fear, our imagination starts working and it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. It becomes much bigger than us. Uh, for example, I had a girl on my uh, training sessions that she came to me saying, I cannot swim where I cannot touch. I can swim normally well when I can touch the bottom, but if it is two meters, three meters, four meters, I cannot swim anymore. And I said, okay, interesting. Why? That why is very important because people do not think of why they do have fear. And this why um, led her giving me a very interesting um, explanation. She said, because I have fear that the water will take me and pull me down and I will not have uh, the possibility to go up. I said, oh, interesting. It goes against the physical law, but it's interesting. Okay, let's try it together. I'll take you my hand. We'll go hand by hand uh, on the pool. We have the four and a half meter uh, depth of the pool. We'll go together on the bottom of the pool hand by hand and we'll see how the water will grab us and hold us there. Uh, you do uh, trust me, you know, so if something will happen, I will bring you up. But okay, okay. She was trans uh, and we went there. Uh, we went on the bottom and then I said, stop, you, you shouldn't move. Just uh, see how the water will grab you. And the water took her and put her up. She came up with this eyes and, oh, but it uh, didn't take me. It didn't leave me there. I said, yes, so I don't have fear. <laughs> what? I don't have my uh, imagination. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't have, uh, it's not right. So, and in this way, the fear just went away because uh, we make a really, uh, absurd um, thinking about fear and as soon as we uh, work with it, as we see it, we understand that there is no way. The fear goes away. Yeah, just one thing. When we did this exercise, I had something in my mind. When I was very, very young, like when I was nine years and a half, I joined the national team of Greece doing athletic. And the first meeting that we had that was national, so we had big athletes that they were more agile than me. I saw them doing more or less the same thing, like shaking their hands, shaking their heads, shaking the legs. And I thought that it was a sort of a ritual. So I started doing the same as well, because everybody that was big was doing it. So I was copying it without knowing why and how. And uh, still see it on TV when before starting running or jumping or whatever. but. Now, just by reminding this exercise, it reminded it was not only ritual, that really it gets you lose a lot more. So it was something that I was doing when I was very young on that and this specific, I never saw it again, I never did it again. I never combined the part of the ritual with the fact that what gives you that really I felt different after just shaking my, my body for a while. So 
yeah, if you look, the athletes that do the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, I think it works. It works a lot. Thank you, Dini. iPad. Okay, unmute. You hey, can. Hey, hey, Marina. You hear me? Hi, everyone. My name is George. I just uh, it's my first time in Zoom, so I didn't put my name on it. Uh, first of all, I want to say hi to Federico and Giovanni. Thank you very much. You, you guys improved my deep dive very much after uh, your uh, after meeting. Yeah, we did the uh, with my forty. Yeah, yeah, Marina. Uh, my question to you. Uh, when you go deep uh, and uh, the pressure starts pressing you, it's uh, like normal reaction of your body to uh, to get more stiff with your muscles. And this, I know this is wrong, but how? Uh, what is your mental uh, recommendation? How we can lose uh, this tension uh, going deep? Because you know it's a reaction just to to react to the pressure, but I know it's wrong, but I do it sometimes. Okay, uh, may, I answer, may I start my answer with a question? Uh, why are you going deep? What for are you going deep? It's uh, just, uh, I'm doing it for, for fun. I, 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 I'm going deep to, to, to levels that I feel comfortable, but sometimes it, it gets better, like uh, dive, sometimes it's not so good so i decide that's my limit so far and i'm going up but just i'm trying to 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 reach uh, to reach my limits but to, not to push them mm -hmm. okay uh, you made a wonderful answer to my question you said i'm doing it for fun so yeah. uh to be more relaxed have fun <laughs> so when you are going down just find uh, the source of having fun and it will bring your muscles to be relaxed uh, for example i'm going down uh, to have pleasure i love water and uh, deeper i go more pleasure i have so my muscles do not tense at all because i'm there not for, to tense myself not to push myself and there for the pleasure you're there for fun and fun is a wonderful uh, emotion so go there and play have fun and your muscles will relax Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you always have answers in your questions. Just listen to your question and you will answer uh, yourself by, by yourself on your question. We have a really wonderful mind. It has everything in it. I like this answer very much. <laughs> thank you. Enjoying the water is the best way to, to, to have results. So until... Uh, we enjoy in the water, all the, the depth becomes a consequence, not uh, the goal. Yep. And the deeper I go, more I can feel it. I can feel this pressure and the silence and this uh, slow down uh, and the fall down. I love it so much. I like have it in all myself. Like, oh, that's so amazing. Sam. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I would like to ask you a question. How do you work with students? who are uh, lying to themselves. I mean, uh, they are scared, they are afraid by something, but they don't want to accept it. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, it's, 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 yeah, it, uh, often it happens uh, with men, because women would accept the fear, uh, with, with uh, understand that they have fear easier, easier. Because for a man to have fear, it's a sort of... Uh, uh, they are failing. Yeah, a sort of failing, a sort of, oh, I'm a man, I cannot we be... We are a man. Uh, so, uh, there is a rejection. Um, if I see that the person do have fear of something, uh, I will try uh, to, um, to make him realize that, they had, that he has fear. Uh, there is a wonderful example uh, or in, in the movie. I saw uh, Dr. Galito. Uh, there is the gorilla that is having fear of everything. Uh, she doesn't exit from the house and she's there uh, always very fearful, a big black gorilla. 
And uh, Dr. Delito is working with her psychologically and explaining that there is nothing wrong to have fear. That's okay to have fear. We all have fear. That's natural. That's in our uh, DNK, in our blood. And there's this thing with the tiger where a gorilla is fighting with the tiger and uh, she's saying, that's nothing wrong to have fear. <laughs> that's nothing wrong to have fear. That's okay to have fear. And he, he, she, she wins. And that's a, a wonderful psychological um, part of this movie that explains us that if we accept that we do have fear, we can use it like uh, with, uh, um, with this energy. Because if we do not accept it, we cannot work in it with it. It will just stop us. So I, first of all, I will uh, show, I will explain, I will help the person to uh, accept that he has fear. And then we will work with it. Uh, can we go to the meditation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Let's close our eyes and put uh, us in the comfortable position with our back straight and with all our muscles relaxed. We'll breathe with our belly. With every exhalation, we put away all our thoughts and tensions and all the information we get today. We just empty our mind and relax our body. We feel like we are in the water and it's so warm and pleasant and we feel that every cell of our body is relaxing in there. And it's so pleasant, comfortable and nice. We are swinging on the water, breathing with our belly and feel how well we are. We feel our inner smile that is in our mouth going through our third eye. It's the place uh, between our brows. We breathe and swim in the water. And we go to the period of our life when we were kids and we are so curious about everything, making so many questions. Uh, uh, by our parents and our friends. And we feel how interesting it is to wake up in the morning and see the light and see the butterflies and the sky and to try to understand what is going on around to go on our favorite paths in the wood or at the sea and to find the miracles and uh, to feel that excitement of something new and of this curiosity that brings us to discover this world. Let's breathe with this emotion of curiosity in our chest. And feel how it um, fulfills us with joy. This curiosity, so light and joyful, fulfills all our chest and our head, our arms and hands, our back and belly, our hips and legs and feet and we all become a big curiosity ready to see this world this life like a real miracle and to find always in everything uh, the manifestation of this miracle and to discover it in the best way and to be really happy in this curiosity we make a deep inhalation. Keep this state of curiosity inside our chest and inside our body. This is a very powerful tool we can use all the time in free driving, in our everyday life, especially when we are tired, we just switch on this curiosity in our chest and go forward with these new uh, emotions and new energy to discover the world. We make an inhalation. Remember this state. 
open our eyes. Oh, I can see some smiles on your lips and I am very glad about that. So today we've done a very interesting and pleasant meeting speaking about crisis, curiosity and fear and many other things. I thank you so very much for being today here to speak about it. And I invite you to our Monday sessions. Dimi is going to Monday sessions. Uh, it's um, online training that I'm doing every Monday from 6 p.m. Italian time to 7.30. We're also free diving in the bowl of water, making different physical uh, and uh, psychological exercises. Uh, and uh, then, um, on my website, I will send on the chat uh, the content. On my website, you can find uh, all of the information about workshops that hopefully will start in May, <laughs> but we'll see. In May, we're going to free dive with whales if uh, we can fly. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll be always glad also for individual sessions. You can just contact me. I put on the chat my phone and website and YouTube channel uh, to see um, underwater beautiful vid videos. Uh, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, Marina. Thank you very much. Grazie. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao, Marina. Grazie. Ciao, Marina. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Ciao, grazie. grazie. Thank you.